on Five News, football's child abuse scandal grows. Three police forces are now investigating allegations as more players go public. Former England footballer Paul Stewart is the highest profile so far, and he believes children are still at risk today. There are still predators out there. Um, it's not just football, it's sport in general. Also on the programme, serial killer Stephen Port is jailed for life. His victims' relatives cheer in court as the judge says he will never be released. We finally have justice for our Jack and the other boys. That sick, twisted scumbag will never be able to hurt or destroy anyone else's family or life. An alleged terror plot to attack Disneyland Paris. French prosecutors give new details. And the bargain hunters turning Black Friday into a £2 billion bonanza. Hello, welcome to Five News. I'm Matt Barbet. The child abuse scandal at the heart of football is growing, with claims there was an historic paedophile ring and predators are still operating in the sport today. Five footballers now come forward to publicly allege they were abused by youth coach Barry Bennell. Three police forces have now confirmed they are investigating allegations within the sport. And today, more former players went public, as Julian Drucker reports. Never told anyone. Kept it locked away right in the back of my head. As the scale of this scandal grows, so too does the pain for those reliving their abuse as youth footballers. Today on TV, two more former players came forward to speak out. Chris Unsworth says he was raped up to a hundred times whilst in the Manchester City and Crew Alexandra youth teams. You just get on with your life and you forget everything that has happened. As I say, luckily I had my golf to go to mm. and that guided me through, I think. But both my, both my parents have died and that hurts me. Yeah. Once again, the alleged abuser is Barry Bennell. The former Crew Alexandra youth coach and scout has been jailed on three separate occasions for abusing young boys. But now several police forces are investigating whether his convictions underestimate his crimes. Currently out on licence, he wasn't at home when police raided it. They left with possessions and even his pet. As the allegations escalate, an unnamed ex-Newcastle United player has reportedly contacted police about this man. George Ormond, a coach in the North East, has already been jailed for six years for numerous sexual assaults. Meanwhile, an NSPCC hotline set up for those abused within youth football continues to be busy. We get people calling us because they have some concerns about children now, or, um, not necessarily about sexual abuse, but other forms of concerns. And we're also getting parents coming through to us asking what is a very relevant question, is my child safe in football now? But former footballer Paul Stewart, who says he was abused, believes children today are still vulnerable across all sports. There are still predators out there. Um, it's not just football, it's sport in general. Um, the access to, to children in sport is greater uh, than I think in most places apart from schools. So, and the way in which they manipulate them and saying that they can make them stars or, or whatever they, they do to get access to them, um, it won't be, you know, it'll still be going on somewhere. The courage of ex-footballer Andy Woodward in speaking out is unearthing dozens, perhaps hundreds, of similar stories. Well, Julian's with me now. Uh, Julian, this is moving apace. And what are police now saying about it? Well, like with the Jimmy Savile scandal, police forces are receiving so many allegations at the moment. At, we, at the moment, we know there are three forces uh, looking at claims like this. They are Hampshire, Northumbria and Cheshire. Cheshire has said it's looking at more than one individual. There could be a national investigation like we saw with Operation Utree if the number of allegations uh, keeps rising. This is all in addition to that special NSPCC hotline which we now believe has had more than a hundred calls uh, in the last two days.
We heard there as well former England player Paul Stewart speaking out again, saying he believes there are still predators out there. And as that man from the NSPCC pointed out, what are parents expected to do about that and how are they going to respond? Well, there are now more child protection measures in place since the days of these allegations in the 70s and 80s for all sorts of reasons. Uh, the Professional Footballers Association, the PFA, has stressed today that there are lots of these balances and, and checks now, lots of safeguarding documents, safety nets, but they've said that parents can do their part as well. Lots of these youth clubs are attracting children as young as six or seven. They have asked parents to look out for any changes of behaviour in their children that they can perhaps ensure uh, themselves as well that this kind of thing never happens again. And to alert those children as to what is incorrect behaviour. Julian, many thanks indeed. Relatives of the victims of serial killer Stephen Port have cheered in court as he was told he will die in jail. The 41-year-old was sentenced to life for poisoning four men with fatal doses of a date rape drug. He'd stalked his young victims on gay dating websites before luring them to his London flat. He even covered up two murders with fake suicide notes, which the judge described as wicked and monstrous. Despite striking similarities between the murders, relatives of his final victim had to demand answers for police to make any sort of a link. Dominic Reynolds has the story. The families arrived, all missing sons and brothers. The sisters of Jack Taylor said he was the life and soul of their family. Daniel Whitworth's family said the 22-year-old was kind and had everything going for him. Relatives of Anthony Waldgate said all he wanted to do was follow his dream of being a fashion designer. And from Slovakia, the brother of Gabriel Kavari said he'll live forever in our hearts. Stephen Port killed all four with overdoses of a date rape drug to satisfy his lust, a judge said today, as he handed down a whole life sentence to the rapist and serial killer. That sick, twisted scumbag will never be able to hurt or destroy anyone else's family or life. Our Jack can finally rest in peace. We will always be completely heartbroken as a family. I don't recognise his face. So, so you don't recognise his face? I do not know, no. He denied knowing Jack Taylor in this police interview, and while his story changed repeatedly, Stephen Port never told the truth about what he did. The judge said Stephen Port had caused immense distress to the families of his victims because of the wicked and monstrous lies he'd told in court to cover his tracks. When he told him, you will die in prison, there was applause and cheering from the public gallery. But the police are under pressure now as the watchdog investigates how Stephen Port was able to fool them. Police believed Port when he said Anthony Walgate gave himself the lethal overdose in Port's flat. And they believed this fake suicide note on Daniel Whitworth's body. It was written by Stephen Port and covered in his DNA, which they had on file. But they didn't test it. And in the year that passed before Jack Taylor's death, they took calls from members of the public concerned that a serial killer was on the loose, but they dismissed them. Journalist Benjamin Cohen contacted police with concerns, but was told the deaths of three gay men in East London weren't connected. We were told that actually there wasn't a story for us to, to write about. There was no link between, at that point, three Three, three people who died, um, and that really it wouldn't be a very good idea for us to publish this because it would scare people. Three of the bodies were found in this churchyard in almost the same spot. Gay rights campaigners want the police to ask themselves, did discrimination play a part in missed clues? This may point to possible institutional homophobia, similar to the institutional racism that was identified by the McPherson report after the murder of Stephen Lawrence. That the Metropolitan Police say they're cooperating with investigators and they're looking again at 58 date rape deaths in London to see if this man might have taken more lives. Dominic Reynolds, Five News. Well, the Metropolitan Police are also being accused of putting children in London at risk because of serious failings in the way sexual abuse is being dealt with. The official watchdog, Her Majesty's Inspectorate of Constabulary, found that three quarters of cases were handled inadequately by the force. It also pointed to systemic inconsistency and a lack of leadership. In France, the authorities released more details about a terror attack they believe was being planned for next week. 
They say that five men arrested on Sunday were plotting an act of terror ordered by so-called Islamic State, with Disneyland Paris as one of the possible targets. Charlotte Grant is with me now. Charlotte, uh, tell us more about this. Well, the fact that the authorities have gone into such details today shows that they think that this foiled attack is particularly significant. So crucially, they believe that it was masterminded from Syria or Iraq. So these five men that were arrested in Strasbourg and Marseille, the authorities believe that they received instructions from militants from so-called Islamic State to carry out an attack in France. As for where um, or when, well, Disneyland Paris is one of the targets, as well as the uh, intelligence headquarters in Paris, and they believe it could have been planned for as early as next Thursday. As I say, quite a bit of information has been revealed by the Paris prosecutor. Uh, for example, we know that these orders included instructions to buy weapons. Uh, secondly, that one of the suspects arrested in Marseille was carrying several thousands of euros, mm. which the authorities show um, that they were planning to buy guns. And thirdly, that in the homes of two of the suspects, um, they've uncovered evidence of writings which they believe shows allegiance to so-called Islamic State. Uh, France is in a state of emergency Still. and has been since uh, the Paris attacks last year. So this latest news is only going to add to the tensions in the country. Yeah, fascinating and concerning details. Charlotte, many thanks. Still to come on Five News. Fighting for justice, the mum whose son died after he was tasered by police officers. And we are spending billions, so why has Black Friday become just so big? So have you been on a bit of a spree? What have yeah. you got here? I've got some uh, Christmas crackers, I've got some fairy lights for my Christmas tree. You're ready for Christmas? I'm ready for Christmas. Very organised. We'll see you after the break. Welcome back. You're watching Five News. A mother whose son died two hours after he was tasered by police says there could finally be justice for him after a report that cleared the officers was overturned. 23-year-old Jordan Begley died in July 2013, soon after being shot at his home with a stun gun. It is the first time the Independent Police Complaints Commission has asked for its own report to be overturned so it could then reinvestigate, as Peter Lane explains. Quashed by a court and torn up by Jordan Begley's mother, the original police watchdog report, which had cleared officers of any serious wrongdoing. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I, I, cannot, I, I finally feel like now I'm getting justice for Jordan. It's been court cases, pre-inquests, court cases, inquests, high court judges. You know, it's just one thing after another. When do we get on with our lives? 23-year-old Jordan died two hours after being tasered by officers from Greater Manchester Police. His mum called them, saying he'd grabbed a knife during a row with neighbours. And I need the police here as quick well, as I can, please. Well, I'll get an officer as soon as we've got one. Jordan, just stay there. You're not going out. You're also out with a knife, so you need to get to quick. Eleven officers were sent to the house. The Independent Police Complaints Commission ruled in 2014 that the officers had no case to answer. But the following year, an inquest ruled Jordan did die partly as a result of being inappropriately and unreasonably tasered and restrained. So, in the first case of its kind, what happened here is to be reinvestigated by the IPCC after they took legal action to overturn their own original findings. Now, that may sound unusual, it is unprecedented, but they've described it as the most appropriate course of action for all concerned. There are already wider calls for a parliamentary inquiry into the use of police tasers, with Jordan's death among those cited as an example. Amnesty International welcomes the fact that the IPCC has acknowledged that it got its first investigation wrong and we hope that this High Court ruling allows for the IPCC to carry out a full and thorough review into police's actions. Tragically, Jordan Begley's uh, death is a tragic example as to why tasers need to be used only in, an, in a limited set of circumstances and only when absolutely necessary. Jordan's family say the IPCC should always have waited until after the inquest before making any decisions. The IPCC say no one from their original team will be involved in the new investigation. Peter Lane, 5 News. 
Next, unhealthy lifestyle choices like smoking and drinking are being blamed for a huge rise in the number of people who are getting mouth cancer. That's according to new figures from Cancer Research UK, which show rates have increased by more than two-thirds over the last 20 years. Our health editor, Catherine Jones, has been to meet one woman diagnosed with the disease and who has since changed her lifestyle. Eight years ago, when the youngest of her five children was only one, Rachel Parsons discovered a painful ulcer in her mouth was cancer. So it's quite a clear, quite a large patch. She had to have part of the inside of her cheek removed and skin taken from her wrist to replace the cancerous tissue. The mental scars have taken far longer to heal. I was assigned two cancer nurses and one I asked, you know, was I going to die? And her answer was she, she couldn't answer that question. So that was, that, sorry, that got me because obviously I've got five small children. Now a new analysis has revealed cases of mouth cancer have jumped by 68% over the last two decades, with the number of people diagnosed annually rising from 3,700 20 years ago to more than 7,500 a year now. It's estimated that two-thirds of those cancers are linked to smoking. It could be that we're seeing this increase now and that's based on how many people were smoking say 20, 30 years ago. So as we've seen the smoking rates decrease, hopefully we'll start to see that in the number of people getting cancer also decreasing soon. But drinking alcohol, having a poor diet without enough fruit and veg and being infected with the human papilloma virus, HPV, also raise the risk of oral cancers, meaning the upward trend in cases may continue. Rachel believes we all need to be much more vigilant. You brush your teeth, you have a look, yeah, they're clean, and that's it. Oh, I've got a little ulcer, oh, it's fine, it'll go. And they've still got that ulcer three weeks later, and it's fine, it'll, it'll go. But people need to be aware that anything different in their mouths does need to be looked at. Rachel is lucky her disease was caught early, but each year more and more people are contracting this form of cancer. Catherine Jones, Five News. Twelve people have been arrested on suspicion of arson over a series of enormous wildfires in Israel. The fires have been burning around the country for four days now, with tens of thousands of people ordered to be evacuated from their homes. No serious injuries, though, have been reported. Now, it is the super shopping day of the year, the so-called Black Friday, of course, where we spend billions chasing bargains and cut price goods. But this year, more than any other, British shoppers have been shunning the actual shops to instead get their deals from the comfort of their computers or their phones. What it means, stores on the high street have been a bit quieter than expected. It has been a very different story online, as Minnie Stevenson has been finding out. Black Friday. For the committed bargain hunter, Christmas has come early. Or at least that's what the big stores want you to believe. Sale signs designed to tempt you to buy more. Only this year, not quite the chaos some had predicted. These were the scenes inside one shop. But don't be fooled, we're still shopping, just online more. Welcome to Santa's Grotto, or Amazon HQ in Hertfordshire, where across the country, they're expecting to make over £7 million today. How much has Black Friday sort of accelerated in the last couple of years for you guys? Well, look, I think it's extremely popular with customers. Um, we have thousands of deals available for them. Um, and, and really, this year, we've extended it to be 12 days running up to this day because it, it, we've just had so much demand for it. How many things are you selling, say, per minute? Uh, I reckon in the last minute we've been talking, based on last year we would have sold about 5,000 items and we'd expect a bit more than that this year. Just in one minute? Just in a minute. Of course, it's no longer just a stampede of shoppers online, but warehouses like this also give us our bargain fix. In fact, we have become so obsessed with Black Friday as a nation that it's now thought we'll spend nearly £2 billion on a massive shopping spree across the UK. But more than half of that will be online. It's just a little bit more civilised, isn't it? Yes, two years ago in Britain, people were literally falling over themselves for the best deal on Black Friday. It's a really quite bizarre phenomenon. Black Friday makes no sense in the UK. It's an American import on a normal working day. It's just a nonsense. That's why the retailers have tried to do things differently and actually spreading their promotions over probably a dozen days rather than just today. Today at Brent Cross Shopping Centre in London, the sales may be stealing someone's thunder, but shoppers remain calm, mostly. Well, this boy knows a bargain when he sees one. 
So have you been on a bit of a spree? What yeah. have you got here? I've got some uh, Christmas crackers. I've got some berry lights for my Christmas tree. You're ready for Christmas? I'm ready for Christmas. Um, um, what is the big appeal of Black Friday? Because it's pretty busy. It could be quite stressful. Um, Why? Know, Why do it? You just want to get a bargain, don't you? Everyone wants a bargain. There's so many people. Do you, would yeah, you rather do it online? Yeah, I've been here since 9. 9 a.m.? Yeah, since 9 o'clock. Are you ready to go home or have you got a full schedule of shopping I'm still? I'm nearly done and then I'm going home and put my feet up. For a long lie down? Yes. It's crowdy. So yeah. why do it? It's crazy. Well, it's just a feeling of it. You like the buzz? Yeah. <laughs> do you like the buzz? Yes, we like it. <laughs> with the majority of us shopping online, there may be less of a mad rush on the high street, but with record sales still predicted, it seems our insatiable appetite for a bargain lives on. Minnie Stevenson, 5 News. That is just about it from me for now. I'll be back, though, at 6.30 with 5 News tonight when I'll have more on our top story, the child abuse scandal that is now rocking football. I'll be talking to the former England footballer Paul Stewart, uh, the highest-profile player so far to admit that he was abused. And would some of these men still be alive if police had realised earlier that they had a serial killer on the loose? As Stephen Port is jailed for life for four murders, I'll be asking a former Scotland Yard detective whether elements of the police are still institutionally homophobic. But that's it for now. Chris Page will be here with the weather next, and I'll see you again at 6.30. Hope you can join me then. If not, do have a good weekend. Bye-bye.